Howdy, everybody. Hey, we are so happy we are camping again this weekend. However, we are at Mount Magazine. We're back. Yeah, haven't been here in over a year, or no, it's been a year, one mm -hmm. year. This is Arkansas's tallest peak at 2,753 feet. Very nice up here. What yeah. was the temperature in Little Rock? 87. 87. And 70-something? 70 75. Four? Four. 74 yeah. here. And it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So, But if you have not seen the other two vlogs, we're going to link them below, so you should check those out as well. Yeah. Uh, but we claimed our stake here. We got a nice little spot. There's only us and one other camper here right now, um, but I'm sure it'll fill up later because it's Friday. Yeah. And it feels good up here. Low tonight is in the 50s, so perfect. Oh, and to get spots up here in this, there's a whole entire campground for RVs. And and you can tent camp there as well if you want to, but it's usually booked up. Mm -hmm. And you reserve there, but this area that we're in is Brown Springs yeah. day use area, rec area. However, they allow dispersed camping. So you come here, you get your spot first, then you drive back. To the visitor center and then you pay. Yeah, And that's what we are about to do. Yep. We are at the visitor center. We're going to go in here, check in and pay for our camp spot. That is by far, and I always say it, one of the most amazing visitor centers for a state park I've ever been in. Yeah, I love that visitor center. Like you saw me get the soap, and um, I always have to get a bar of uh, soap here. And I got a shirt, so. That was a nice shirt. They didn't have any good ones that I liked for me, but. Yeah. It, all of those were pillaged through. All they, had, all they had was a red one, and I don't do red. Yeah. I don't I do red. Either. But we are just going to go see our friend Justin at the lodge. See you there. Hey, Justin. Hello. So we are going to enjoy this for a few minutes and hang out. And catch up because it's been over a year since it we've seen him. It has. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. The food was great. That was fried raviolis and duck wings duck i don't know it was local locally sourced very good duck, duck, wings. duck wings with the orange spicy orange glaze he knows he likes it spicy orange glaze anyway it's really good um we're back at camp now and the campground's filled up quite a bit i'll give you a little turnaround so they were here already we've got somebody over there at the bluff we've got someone over here so we decided we're gonna go ahead and make dinner. I am making a pan seared chicken, breaded chicken breast and buttered egg noodles. So I'm gonna get started.
Bon appétit! We are about to go to bed because it's getting dark. Well, I'm going to do dishes and then we'll hang out by the fire for a little bit. And then we'll go to bed. Oh, yeah. We're not going directly to bed, but we're going to say goodnight to y'all. Mm -hmm. right. See you guys in the morning. And we have a treat for you in the morning. We do? Yeah. Oh, we, yeah, we do. Yeah, we got a treat for you in the morning. We're so excited. Okay, see you all in the morning. Good morning. Kelly's still asleep, or I think she's getting up. However, we want to introduce y'all to some people that watch the vlog who live just south of the mountain. And uh, they are up right now. They came over last night and they started talking to us. And they have this amazing cooking setup. They told me I could come over at about 7.30. It's about 7.30 right now. Check it out. Very nice guys. This is Tracy and Jason. And what is this thing? This is awesome. This is a fire disc, and lucky enough to get it, and it come in yesterday, so I'm still a newbie with it. And you said there was two different heights. Yes, they have a, I believe it's a 24 inch, and this is the 36 inch, and that's height. And when you pull this off, yes, and that's the brand. Yeah, fire, fire disc. disc. And this thing is solid, one or a quarter yeah. inch thick steel. Yeah, it's heavy duty. And then there's the burn base. And I got it. This here's what's so cool. And it just yeah. goes flat. Take your bottle off, of course, and it just packs up into nothing. Man, that is handier than pockets on a shirt, I tell you what, right there. Yeah, it's awesome. That is a solid flame. So they're gonna show us a little bit of how this thing works. So what y'all cooking this morning? We are gonna make some sausage, gravy, scrambled eggs. Right on, okay. And that's already cooking. I mean, it's instant. Yeah, it doesn't take it long to heat up. No. Oh yeah. I want to say I just, that looks great. I want to say I just took what, 10 minutes to cook. Yeah, it didn't take long. <laughs> well, Tracy, Jason, thank y'all so much for displaying this or give us a show of how it works. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your trip, and thank you for watching all our vlogs. That means a lot. And I'm going to go over here and check on Kelly because I see her moving around. I think it's time for me to help her make some breakfast. There you go. All right. Well, we'll see y'all later. Nice to meet everybody. Nice to meet y'all. Yep. Catch y'all on the other. All right, so I wanted to show you our surprise. We listened to the comments, and we got something new. We're going to try it out for the first time this morning. Came in last week. The Coleman Outdoor Oven. So we're gonna have Cody set it up. I'll show you guys how it sets up. It's really easy. Comes in flat like this. You have a lever here. You just open up that lever, and then you have that same lever on the bottom. You expand, expand it out. Then down here, you have the bottom plate. And if you notice, it's circular. So your flame's gonna hit here, it has a heat shield to prevent direct heat from cooking in there and it forces the heat to roll out to the sides. It has some little ears on it that go in like this. And then over here you gotta make sure you get in that tab. Then you have a door that does the same thing. Make sure you're in those tabs. Then you lock those little levers that we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. top and bottom. Oh, hold on. Lift it up. And you make sure 
This fits with the flame right there, just like that. So if you have um, like a, any kind of camp stove, it got a stove, it doesn't have to be a Coleman. You instead of having both wings out to block the wind, you fold in one wing to sit this on one side. However, it does not work very well from the comments that we read on uh, oblong burners that are oval shape because if the flame goes out to the side, one person said that their handle melted oh, because okay. the heat That's was outside good. of it. All right, cool. And then it also has one metal tray that goes in here. Where do you want this at, honey? Put it in the very center. Okay. And then, uh, just like this. Okay. So now we're going to get it preheated. Assuming it's just like an oven. So we're going to turn the burner on. And this is the heat indicator, and it's going to tell us making sure it's over. what temperature it's at and oh, wait, that's plenty of room right, also I decided I'm gonna put my so I'm making cinnamon rolls this morning I decided I'm gonna get one of these pans to put the cinnamon rolls in I hope this is big enough for all the cinnamon rolls it only comes with one rack even though there's three settings it'd be cool if there's two racks still trying to find one I might need to go to Walmart and check and see what they have but this is an 8x8 eight eight pan um, so I'll let you guys know whenever we it heats up, uh, we'll put the cinnamon rolls in there. <laughs> Brain fart. For my cinnamon rolls, 350 is the temp, and it's heating up pretty quick. I mean, we're almost to 350. And what? It wasn't even five five seconds ago. Oh, hey. Yeah. Uh, we had our neighbor's bar or something. All right, so it's at 350. It took not even five, six minutes. So I'm gonna slide these in here and set a timer. Yes, nobody has a phone, you have a phone? I got a phone. Uh, 18 minutes is the time. We turned the burner down and it seems like it's regulating about 350, a little above. You said 18 minutes? Yeah. Okay. So we have our coffee. It is locally sourced uh, out of Sherwood. Yep, Sherwood, Arkansas. Arkansas. Bob's Mug Coffee. Of course, you know, we like the espresso. So we're going to try this today. The cool thing about Bob's Mug Coffee, he, they just started. It's a family-owned business, but 5% of all sales go to Make-A-Wish Foundation. You can get it in holer ground, but since we use the French press, you have to ground it pretty coarse. So I go ahead and I ground it at home, that way I have it ready to go. They're done, and it took the, um, 18 minutes like it said. The only thing I would have to say is you do have to sit here and watch this dial and kind of mess with the burner a little bit. I think it flowed between 325 and 375 the entire time. I just kind of messed with the dial just a little bit on the propane. Um, but other than that, I think it works really good. Look at that heavenly looking thing. <laughs>
we are obviously not in any kind of hurry today. We're just chilling. So I think Cody's going to do yoga and we're going to figure out what trail we're going to do. I don't even know what time it is. It's probably like 11, maybe almost 10.58. Oh my God, it's 10.58. I don't even know what time we got up. 7.30. This is like the slowest morning, but it's really nice. I'm enjoying it. The whole campground's like cleared out. So we're just chilling over here by ourselves. It's really nice. Uh, every one of these spots were taken last night, and there was one, two, three, four people that left, and three still here, including us. So, there's spots available. Saturday night. Y'all get here. We got a notification that my good friend Jason is actually camping over at the RV hookup campground area, and we are about to go over there and see if he's over there right now. He just got a new camper and he wants to show us that so are you ready got everything done i'm ready let's do this we came over here and jason is here and he's about to give us a tour of his brand new camper this is jason hey guys so what brand camper is this it's a forest river and it's a wolf club by forest river 17 jg is the model uh, it's a bunkhouse with a queen up front and it has a slide dinette so I like the colors on the outside. It's so cute in here. This is our camper. And this is the slide out? This is the slide. It slides out. You dine it. Turns into a bed. And you just pull out the legs and drop the table? Yes. Okay. And then the back cushions will they'll lay on top of here and that'll serve as the, the bed, the base of the bed. The freezer, a heater, bathroom guys you gotta see the bathroom hold on check this out okay full-on bathroom but then it has a sink built in here i mean for the size i didn't expect to actually see this and then of course the bunk that he was talking about if you remove this that door right there goes outside and you can store bikes and everything here but is there some kind of partition or something to keep things from falling or how's that work when you remove the bed so this pops up. Mm -hmm. So oh, it just lifts. So it, it goes this way. Yeah. Correct. So okay. gotcha, gotcha. And then All it right. makes a wall and then you just access it from outside mm -hmm. and you can still use the top bunk. Okay. Right. The bunk okay. lifts up. It's got little latches. And then of course the kitchen setup, that's the heater down there, that's right? The heater, yep. Two burner stove. I love this. Your vent. Here. Microwave. So this actually lifts up and that's a gas burner. Yes. I guess that folds. Man, this is nice. I don't like that. Oh. <laughs> oh. LED lights. And then, of course, this cutting table area with a sink under it. And this is nice. Y'all had lunch just a minute ago, so don't mind That's the right. dishes. <laughs> is that a queen? Yeah. It's a short queen. Yeah, so if you lift that up, it's got full on storage up under there. And so then the TV right here. I have TV. Oh, Kelly, you want to show them what you thought was cool about this TV? Oh, yeah, so apparently he showed us that you can remove the TV and you can slide it right here and there's a plug here and you can watch TV outside. Which? And I was like, you could do workout videos out here. Like yoga videos yeah, and all that. that. Awesome. Well, man, I think we're fixing to go hit some trails, right? Yeah. And we might see y'all later at camp or something for a little beverage yeah, and thank you for giving Sounds us good. a tour yeah no problem guys it's really yeah. awesome all right appreciate okay. you guys coming out here yeah. Yeah. so we will see y'all at the first the trail. the trail see you there we are at the north rim trail it is 2.3 miles to the visitor center we're not doing 2.3 miles we're just gonna hike a little bit of ways and just see some cool stuff it's really nice and overcast feels good we have done this trail way before we started vlogging oh years ago yeah. hey look good firewood Oh. <laughs> you and your firewood. <laughs> and the main reason we wanted to come to this one is, you know, in our last vlog we done the bluff overlooks, and uh, we're trying to give you all a different variety of trails here. Yeah, there's lots one, of there's about six or seven trails you could take here. This one kind of gets down in like a little valley with uh, some big rocks and boulders. We are at the sign that tells you which way to go to the visitor center. This way is Mount Magazine Falls, which it's probably not flowing. We hadn't had rain in 
Wait. It's blowing. Is it? Okay. We haven't had rain in probably about five days, but it might actually be a little bit of a spring. I think it is. Oh, cool. Is that it down there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is some cool rock. It looks like it's stacked. Like, purposely stacked. I haven't talked to many of y'all about this, but what's so cool about this rock feature is, like she was saying, because it is stacked, hundreds of millions of years ago, this was li or, uh, a delta. And it was just sediment coming from an ancient river that laid down sediment and created this rock. And whenever South America collided, down where we camped uh, the last vlog in the lower Washitals, it uplifted and created the mountains to be more straight up vertical. But here, when you get into the Arkansas River Valley, it has a little bit of a lean to it, but not as much down there. So it more or less just lifted it up, which created a limestone cap that protected from all erosion. And that's why this was protected and made it the highest point in the Arkansas, actually in the Midwest. And whenever uh, Colorados were being built, it we used to be low ocean out there. Well, when the Colorados were formed, or the, sorry, the Rockies were formed, it uplifted and created the Arkansas River, which came through, and that's what created the fast erosion of all this, and it, it left this island in the sky, so to speak. This is the map magazine fall? Yep. That was all uphill. <laughs> but I think we've had enough. We're gonna go relax in the hammocks. See you there. On the way to camp, we're driving around uh, top of Mount Magazine and they have a hang gliding area. Uh, you have to register for it at the visitor center, but there's someone out there hang gliding. So we thought we'd let y'all take a peek. There's several people watching. That was pretty cool. So now we're gonna can I, head can back I do to that? Camp. Can I start doing that? I'm sure that equipment is pretty expensive. Okay, I just <laughs> think that'd be awesome. There's three of them. There's three? Yeah, here comes the other two. It's me and Jonathan. <laughs> So oh, Jonathan has finally made it with us. Hey. He's getting set up. And we've both showered. And I just want to say the showers here are amazing. Great shower. Love the showers. Oh, but they're not here here. They're well, just about a quarter of a mile. Not even a quarter of a no, mile. No, like it's like hundred yards. Right down the road. But it's at the R V campground area. So you're allowed to use those showers it's over there. Cameron Bluff. Cameron Bluff campground. Anyway, showers are great top notch but i think i'm gonna go ahead and start cooking here in a second because i'm making something different i'm making an oktoberfest stew i know it's not fall yet but we cannot wait for fall to get here and it feels good up here so oh, and you want to let it sit for a while oh too. yeah i'm gonna cook it early because you want to let it sit for a little bit you know stew's already it's better if you let it sit over for a little bit um so i'm gonna get started on that as soon as jonathan gets set up and we all get settled in Man, i'm going to do that summer. it has begun the time that Kelly does her delicious cooking. And Kelly is cooking what she said that she was cooking, which is stew. And I love stew. Oktoberfest stew. I know that was kind of creepy, guys. I'm sorry. 
So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slice my sausage and I'm doubling this recipe because Jonathan eats a lot. So what do we got here? Some slow, slow smoke pork sausage? So you can use any kind of sausage, beef, pork, whatever. I got what the store had, so. So I have all of my sausage, smoked sausage cut up. It looks like a lot, but it's what the recipe calls for. And this is a one pot dish, um, so which makes it really easy for camping. I don't know why this is the first time I've done this out here before. But you've made it at home before, right? Yeah, oh yeah, I made it at home a lot. So I'm gonna add some oil to my pan. So what you wanna do is caramelize all the weed. Uh-oh, uh -oh. that All right, while that is caramelizing, I'm gonna slice up my onion. So normally the recipe calls for half an onion, but like I said, I'm doubling, so I'm just gonna do the whole onion. And the way you wanna slice it, you don't wanna chop it. I'll show you how I'm gonna slice it. Kinda do it a little thin. Now I'm gonna add my sliced onion and we're gonna let that caramelize as well. The key to the cabbage is you wanna slice it fairly thin. So now that my onion is caramelized, I'm gonna throw in my cabbage. I like those little guys. Get off. All right, so we're gonna let this cook down. Hopefully I have enough room in my pan because next we're gonna add some potatoes. Jonathan is peeling the skins off of them right now. Now I'm gonna add my spices. So it's calling for just a pinch of salt. Black pepper, caraway, two cloves of garlic. Actually, I need four. Forgot we're doubling the recipe. Oh, okay, here. So she needs four cloves of, cloves of, cloves. Four cloves of garlic. Garlic. Now I've got my garlic chopped and I'm gonna throw that in there. So the main ingredient in this stew is the beer and I've got an Oktoberfest. So it calls for two cups of beer, which is beer. Beer. Someone's gonna have to drink this beer. I got you covered, babe. Unless you want it, you want it? Oh, um, nah, I'm good. Okay, and... that's good, that's okay. good. So I'm gonna let my garlic cook just a little bit more longer before I put that beer in there. Beer time. So we're gonna let that cook in. Really you're just wanting the flavor of the beer. It's gonna cook the, all the alcohol out of it, but you're wanting that flavor. So we're gonna let that simmer for a minute. While we're waiting on the beer to simmer, I'm going to go ahead and cube my potatoes. I've got four potatoes here. All right, so I've got some chicken stock here and it calls for hot chicken stock. So I'm gonna heat it up a little bit in this other pan. But I thought that was vegetable. You can use chicken or vegetable. Anytime a recipe calls for chicken stock, I always just grab the vegetable stock. I don't know, I think it tastes better. That's just my opinion. You can use whatever you want. My chicken stock is, vegetable stock is warm, so I'm going to add it in here. Give it a good stir. 
I'm gonna add in my cubed potatoes and hopefully this does not overflow. Aha, we're good, we're good. So I waited for this to come to a boil and I just stirred it and I'm going to cover the pot. You wanna leave it open just a little bit and it's gotta go for about 40 minutes. So we'll check back with you. Yeah, sure. Okay. We're gonna set a timer for 40 minutes and then we'll be back to check it. Our timer just went off for the 40 minutes and this is what the pro finished product looks like. Now what you wanna do is top it off with some apple cider vinegar. And some fresh parsley. I'm just gonna cut a little bit of that. Ooh, that vinegar is strong. It's burning my nose. Can, can you smell, smell it? it yeah. Goodness gracious. It smells good. I think that's probably good. So are we gonna let it sit for a while? Yep, so now I'm gonna just stir it all in and I'm gonna let it sit, you know, it'll probably be better the next day if you wanna make it ahead of time, but I think a couple hours letting it sit, maybe an hour will be just fine. So are you gonna let it, are you gonna let this sit with heat or just? No, mm -mm. I'm just gonna let it sit. And cover it? Yep. All right. Well, I'm gonna let it cool just a minute and then I'll cover it. So our stew is ready and I've got some oil here on our French bread and I've already sliced it up and I'm going to place this over the fire. Right there. We'll let it get good and toasted and let's go look at the stew. So I've left it uncovered the entire time and you see it's kind of thickened up some. And it's still pretty warm. So it's been about, what, an hour? It's been about an hour, I think. It is currently... It smells good. It smells really good. 5.59. So yeah, it's about, it's it was about almost it. 4 o'clock or right around 4. It was 5, four. I think, when was the timer five? went off. Oh, yeah, so 4.59 is what I meant to say. Yeah. Right around there. So it looks good. We're just going to get the bread going and we can eat dinner. So exciting. So it's really good and stewy now. If you can tell, it's not as soupy as it was earlier. There you go. And I don't know if it needs any more salt or pepper. You can just kind of... Yeah, it looks delicious though. Are you excited, Jonathan? Oh yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be good. And this is a... Oh, what is this called again, Kelly? Oktoberfest stew. But it's not October. We got another month. Mm -mm, no can we make it again in October? Yeah, we sure can. If y'all like it. <laughs> oh, we we're, she's she's made this. Like yeah, <laughs> she's made this at home before. It's delicious and nutritious. It is. It's got cabbage in it. Oh, yeah. Kelly, this is really good. Yeah. yeah, it is. This is like the best stew I've ever had. I'm glad you let it sit for a while. That's mm -hmm. important. Thank you. Okay guys, y'all know the drill. It is getting dark and you will not be able to see us here pretty soon. So we're gonna close out for the night. But how good was that dinner? One of the best meals we've ever had camping. <laughs> <laughs> Hands down, it was delicious. It was really good. It was okay. life changing. Like yeah, I didn't realize good. how happy I could be eating camping. Yeah. I'm gonna have to make that more. It's very good. I almost had a tear come down my cheek when the first amount mm. touched my lips. <laughs> or my tongue because my lips can't taste anything however we will see y'all in the morning
morning everybody I was just about to get breakfast started and this morning I'm gonna make my banana pancakes but I also brought um, Nutella to go on top just a variety so we have Nutella and syrup so I'm gonna get that going Let's try this delicious treat. We have been enjoying the hammocks in the shade and we're hungry for a snack. So we have a snack. What do we have? Watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all remember, Jonathan has never had a watermelon in his life before, and today will be his first time, his inaugural, inaugural watermelon tasting ex expedition, I guess you could say. I just hope we have a knife big enough. And it's not just a regular watermelon, it's a black watermelon? I think, yeah. So I don't even know if I've had that before, but he did pick it up at a watermelon stand on the side of the road, and those are usually the best watermelons. Do you even know what a watermelon looks like on the inside, Jonathan? I know it's red. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got yellow watermelons too. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wow, that is pretty. Ooh, that looks good. All right. All right. You ready? You nervous? Yeah. <laughs> Get that. Tell me what you think. Wow, that's good. <laughs> that's delicious. <laughs> so we're gonna leave you guys here. We've already packed up camp. We're just gonna sit here and then take it all in for the last few minutes. But if you like this vlog, make sure you give us a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. And we will catch you on the other. Bye.